I want to go over the Adobe Audition workflow. This is going to be a PowerPoint presentation, and I know some folks are sort of averse to PowerPoint, but this topic lends itself to PowerPoint, so just bear with me here for a couple of minutes while I go through this workflow. The workflow begins by bringing in audio, bringing it into Audition, and there are multiple ways to do that. You can link to existing audio files or video files on your hard drive, and you do that via three different commands, open, import, or insert. You can extract audio from a CD. And now there are multiple ways to extract audio from a CD. You don't have to use Audition, but Audition has a couple of nice features. When you use Audition, those files will appear inside your files panel, which is nice. And you can name those files when you bring them in via the extract audio command. You can record audio from a single source or multiple devices. So you can do a single source like a microphone or an instrument or multiple devices inside a multi-track session, which is a hugely powerful feature of Audition. Once you bring your audio in, then you start to edit those audio files. And you can copy files, cut files, cut parts of a file, paste parts or all of a file into another file, delete portions of a file or all of a file, and then trim audio from the beginning or the end of a clip. You can then fade in or fade out at the beginning or end or even inside the audio file, change the overall amplitude or amplitude in areas within the file, and add silence where needed. Once you've done all this editing, you start adding effects. Now you can apply effects directly to files in the waveform editor, and that process is called destructive. You have to be careful when you work with the waveform editor. When you make changes, you're making changes to the file, and if you save the file with the original file name, you will replace the file. So do be careful when you do the destructive editing side of things in the waveform editor. Your best approach, your best workflow is to rename that file under some other different name and put it in a different folder someplace, which I'll explain inside the tutorials. Or you can apply effects to clips or tracks in the multi-track editor, and that's non-destructive. That basically applies these things electronically, kind of as an overlay that you can hear happen as you're working in the multi-track editor, but in fact, you're not changing the files until you tell it to, if you tell it to. After you apply the effects, you can work in multi-track sessions, which we're already alluding to here. Those multi-track sessions allow you to combine multiple files into a single mix. You typically do this in a recording studio session where you record multiple takes of the same song with different instruments or different vocalists, and then you combine them into a single mix. And in that multi-track session, you can control volume levels and panning of individual instruments or individual voices. You can pan them left or right in the stage in front of you, or you can pan them in a 5.1 mix. And then you apply effects and controls to groups of tracks, which is a great way to simplify your work and also make your system work faster. Instead of applying the same effect to 20 tracks, you can apply one effect to those 20 tracks that have been rooted to one track. It's a great way to do things. It really makes things more efficient. Finally, after you're done doing all your work, you can save, or as sometimes called, export your files. You can save individual audio files using any one of several formats, including these standard ones that most people are aware of. AIFF and MOV are two Apple formats, and WAV is Windows, and MP3 is kind of the standard format for basically everything that you hear in earbuds. And you can create mixed down files of uh, multi-track sessions and save them in those multiple formats. And then finally, you can extract audio channels from, let's say, stereo or 5.1 files to mono files, which can be very helpful when you're trying to isolate one track. So that's the basic audition workflow. We'll go over each of these steps in upcoming tutorials.